Hey guys, what is your favorite thing about your mom? That she's funny and she takes us on a bunch of family adventures. Ooh, adventures. She takes us on adventures and she always smiles. She's kind to me. Ooh, she's kind to you. Carlos Daddy's super strong and she gives us, uh, like, I don't know, she just gives us hope. She gives you help? That's awesome. I feel like she's always there for me and that she is just like really takes care of us and all that stuff. Mm. What about you, Zoe? What's your favorite thing about your mom? Well, she always helps us do stuff when it's hard to do. Well, she helps her out around the house even when nobody asks her to do it. <laughs> I think when she sets up the pool we have. My favorite thing about mom is that she always loves us no matter what and she's always kind. Uh, my favorite thing about my mom is that she's funny. What's your favorite thing about your mom? So my mom is always there. She's very supportive. And of course she thinks I'm handsome. My favorite thing about my mom is that she's never going to stop loving us. But she's nicer than my dad. That she loves you? Yes. Besides her baking, <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about my mom would absolutely be the fact that she has always believed in me, always cheered me on, always been for me, and always been a prayer warrior for me. My favorite thing about my mom is that she's never going to stop loving us. She makes me feel safe when I'm scared. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing about your bonus mom, Cynthia? So Cynthia is very thoughtful, she's very positive, and she has a great sense of humor. Is there anything you want her to know that we have from her a whole bunch? Because I love her. Uh, I love her. I just want her to know even when I'm mad, I still love her with all my heart. Yeah, that we love her and thank you. We love you, Mom. Yeah. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day, Mom. Aww. Good morning, Faith Church, and happy Mother's Day. Um, your kids are so stinking cute. I had so much fun making that video with them. Um, I hope it blessed your hearts and that you know how loved you are today. Um, whether you're a mom, right now, a grandmother, an aunt, a hopeful mom for someday, we want you to know how loved you are and how valued you are. And so we are just preparing our hearts to worship the great and powerful and beautiful God that created each and every one of you. And we just pray that you will be blessed and that you will have a new awareness of who you are today.
Help us to feel your presence. Help us to sit in your peace as we hear from your word today, as Pastor Kirk brings the message. Would you speak to us so clearly that there is no doubt it is you? Help us to remember that we have hearing hearts and we hear and know your voice. You are our good, good Father and you love us so much. We raise our hallelujahs. We raise all the praise and the glory and the honor to you. We love you so much. And it's in Jesus' beautiful and mighty name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Faith Church. We are so glad you are joining us today. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and all the motherly figures out there. We love you, and we're so glad you're joining us today. I am Courtney Knopf, the Children's Director, and... And I am Kirk Proctor, and I am one of the pastors here at Faith Church. And we really are. We're glad that you're joining us. And uh, just with what Courtney said about moms, we do want to say Happy Mother's Day. We also recognize that for some of you, Mother's Day is not the easiest day. It is a challenging day uh, for you. And we just want you to know that even as we pray, prepared and prayed for today, we've been praying for those of you that this is a challenging day. And just want you to know that, that in these moments that God loves and cares for each and every one of you ladies. But we're thankful that all of you uh, that are tuning in have chosen to be with us today. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we've just got a couple things to share with you. Uh, one of the main things coming up in the life of our church is we're excited to tell you is that NTS camp for the team is coming up. We're so excited. This is their favorite week of the year every year. And uh, we are bringing back an oldie but a goodie fundraiser that, Courtney, you've never gotten to experience with us, have you? I haven't, but I've heard it's pretty amazing. Yes. it's, it's In fact, uh, I, I, I heard that you are hoping you win. Well, I don't know if that's true or not. Because so, I've so heard there's some... Here's how this works. We're bringing back the kiss the fill in the blank yeah. fundraiser where some sort of animal or something that you probably don't want to kiss somebody on staff is going to have to kiss and um and and so uh we haven't figured out exactly what that is yet but each week we're gonna have uh jars up set up uh for those that are coming to in person if you want to give online for this you can and you could pick the staff member that you want your gift to go towards all the funds go towards helping to be able to send our teens to a uh, youth camp and to be able to send them to to that and and uh, make sure they get to participate in that and whichever staff member raises the most funds wins and Courtney um, is an Enneagram 2, wing 3. Actually, she's a wing 1. We're going to pretend yeah. she's a wing 3 okay. and really wants to win. Sure. She's very competitive. Oh, she yeah. really wants you to put all <laughs> your money into her jar. Ooh, you know, I think Evan. Evan would be great. Evan is great because he throws up every time yeah. he does this. So definitely vote for Evan. There you go. For I sure. like that. Yeah. We'll team up. Team Evan. Yes. Nice. All right. We're voting for Evan. <laughs> Good. And uh, while you're here, go ahead and fill out a connection card. Let us know how we can be praying for you or just fill it out to say, hey, or maybe don't do that. Well, sure. Yeah, That's do just that. Fine. Say, no. hey. Fill That's it out fine. say, hey. Let us know who you are, where yeah. you're listening from or watching from. That would be great. Our digital connection card. You can find that at wearefaithchurch.com. And then just finally, we just want to say thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, the way that you continue to give blesses our church and allows us to bless our community and to bless those that are in our church as well. And so just want to remind you, there's three ways to give. Yes. We can give. On the Church Center app. That's right. On our website. And you and or you could mail in a check to Faith Church. And or. So and Courtney or. would encourage you to give in all three ways. Just a little of both. Just I like I like the way you're thinking. Yeah. Just for clarity, <laughs> any one of them is fine. If you want to give in all three, that's that's all. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in with us. Uh, we are looking forward just to continuing our worship service uh, with you. So sit back, relax, and let's continue to worship the Lord.
good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, Faith Church peeps. We are glad that you are tuning in with us and joining us for this week's message. This is Mother's Day, and uh, as we dive into Mother's Day today, I'm going to begin, what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about the power of a praying mom. And to begin this message, I figured it only made sense for us to take some time to focus in on the mother of the perfect child. And being that we're in church, you know exactly who I'm talking about. That's right, my mom. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, not my mom. We're going to look at Mary, Jesus' mother. That's who I want to look at today. And I want to spend some time looking at how Luke describes her a little bit. Because Luke is responsible for writing two different books in the Bible. He wrote the book of Luke, which is one of the four Gospels. He also wrote the book of Acts. And Luke is responsible for introducing us. He's, he, he has the first uh, writing of Mary, and he also has the last writing of Mary. And so I want to look at those two things and kind of get an idea of who Mary, the mother of Jesus, was and how we can then apply that to our lives. Now, as many of you know, Mary was a virgin, and she was pledged to be married to Joseph. And when she was about the age of 15, God appeared to her in the form of an angel and asked her to be willing to carry his son into this world to save the world. And Mary at the age of 15 was obedient and said, yes, I will do that. And in Luke chapter 1, at the beginning of Mary's story, we have a hint of who Mary is. Which, by the way, throughout this whole chapter, we get an incredible glimpse, an incredible view and perspective of who Mary is. And I want you to understand something special about Mary. Mary got a lot of things right at an early age, right? Mary got purity right at an early age. She got obedience right at an early age. She got prayer right at an early age. She, she got praise, giving God praise right at an early age. And so what I want to do is I want to look at Luke chapter 1, and we're just going to be in verse 56 for right now. Luke 1, 56, this is Mary speaking. This is a prayer of praise from Mary, and watch what she says. It says, my soul gratifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. This is the beginning of a prayer of praise that she has to God for his kindness and mercy to her. And she does a whole song here of prayer and praise. It's magnificent. I'd encourage you to go read through it and see it. You'll get an idea of the heart of Mary. And, and, and the point that I'm trying to make right in this moment is just that Mary got a lot of things right early on. And especially this idea of prayer and praise. So listen, if, if you're paying attention and you're listening to this and you would categorize yourself at all as young, however you might describe young, <laughs> but if you are young, get things right early. The earlier in life that you can get things right, it, it, when you get things right early, it frees up the blessing of God over your life. It frees up the blessing of God over your life. And Mary got a lot of things right at an early age. And she definitely got prayer and praise right at an early age. Well, if we jump now further ahead, Luke 1 gave us a glimpse of the, the, the first recording of Mary in Scripture. If we jump now to Acts chapter 1, we get the last uh, recorded um, reference to Mary in Scripture. And it paints a, a picture of her as a person who continued throughout her life to get prayer right. And in Acts chapter 1, at this point in time, some time has passed. Mary is now probably about the age of 49 to 50 years old. And, and, and this is after Jesus has voluntarily gone to the cross, been crucified up on the cross for you and for me. He conquered sin and death and did that for us. Now, of course, the Jewish and the uh, Roman leaders, they think they're done dealing with Jesus. They think, yep, we killed him and he was buried and he's gone. But as you know, he rose from the dead, conquering sin and death for you and me. And so this is taking place after that. Jesus has now risen from the dead. He's resurrected. He, he, he's met with his followers, and he's given them some direction. And he told them to go into the upper room where they were going to spend an extended amount of time specifically honing in on waiting upon God. And while they were waiting, they were to spend their time in prayer. And this is significant, this time of prayer in the book of Acts, right at the beginning. It's significant because it's out of this time of prayer in the upper room. It's from this that the early church is born. I mean, this is so, this is so incredible to understand. These prayers, when, when Jesus told them to go there and to pray, these prayers they're praying is what birthed the early church. Do you understand? I want you to get this, that the church was born not while someone was preaching, but while people were praying. 
Do you understand that? The church was born not while someone was preaching, but while people were praying. And here in Acts 1 is those prayers that were taking place that launched the early church. Out of that prayer meeting in the upper room, the church is born. Do you understand what this means? This means, this tells us that prayer releases the kingdom of God. That when you come to the throne of God and you are praying, is it begins to open up the doors of the heavenly Father and it releases the kingdom into our world, into earth, into your life, into where you're at. And so what do we read in the middle of the story? This group of people, they're all gathered in the upper room. They're waiting upon God and they're praying. And who's there? Acts chapter 1 verse 14. Look at who's there. It says they all join together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. What we're seeing here is that for Mary, this commitment to prayer is something that is woven throughout her life. This wasn't like a one-time thing. This wasn't like a, all right, if I'm going to give birth to the Son of God, I better pray when I'm young one time. This was woven throughout her life. This was important to her. Constantly spending time in prayer. And, and I think that Luke is being very intentional here. As I said, Luke wrote both these books, and Luke is responsible for the first reference to Mary in Scripture, and he's responsible for the last reference to Mary in Scripture. And in both places, he's, he's categorizing her as a woman of prayer. He wants you and I to know that and to understand she was committed to prayer. And there's a truth here that I want to point out, that I want us to see. You see, when it comes to prayer, I believe that it matters who prays. I believe it matters who prays. And here's what I want you to understand about this. Oftentimes in life, when we come up against something, when something challenging shows up in our life, our thought is, I've got to go find somebody else to pray for me. Now, that's a great thought. That's a right response, a right action. It's a good thing when you are challenged by something to go and to gather others and ask them to pray. So in no way, shape, or form am I arguing against that or saying you shouldn't do that. But what I'd like to do, if you'll allow me, is I would like to, I'd like to add to that if I can. And so what I want to challenge you with is that when you're up against something challenging and something hard, that it matters who prays. And, and so, so it's not just that you want to ask others to pray, but I want to challenge you to pray too. Because I think it does matter who prays. It matters that Mary was praying over Jesus because God had chosen Mary to be Jesus' mother. I think her prayers mattered. I think they, they made a difference. I think they were a little bit more important than just somebody else random praying because God chose her to be the mother. I, I think it matters who prays. And, and here's why I think it matters who prays. Somebody who was smarter than me once said this, but it struck me. I wrote it down, and now I get to use it. <laughs> but here's why I think it matters who prays. Let, let me show you this thought. It's the idea that where God gives you responsibility, he gives you authority. <laughs> where God gives you responsibility, he gives you authority. This is why who prays matters. He wants you and me, and all of us to be praying over and for the people, places, and things that he's given us responsibility for. So if there is someone or something or someplace God has given you responsibility for in your life, it means that he's also giving you a special kind of authority over it. I really think there's something to this. I think it matters who prays. And so Mary was entrusted with Jesus' care, and I think it was significant that she was praying. In other words, what do I mean by this? Well, I, I feel like it matters that Emily and I, my spouse, my wife, it matters that her and I pray for our kids. In fact, we've made the decision in our life that this is so important that we're going to make it a priority. And, and we've said we, we want to pray every day for our kids. And in the beginning, we weren't very good at it. If we wanted to. We wanted to be committed to. But I'll just be, I, I forget. I forget things all the time. <laughs> I was just telling Jacob, our creative director, as I was getting ready to preach this for you guys, that, that all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah, it's Mother's Day. Oh, shoot, there was something I was going to do for Emily and I haven't done it yet and I want to do it. Because I forget things all the time. So Emily and I were like, hey, we want to pray for our kids, and I'd forget. So we set an alarm that goes off every single night so that we can stop in that moment and pray for our kids. Now, even with that, can I just be vulnerable and honest? Even with that, sometimes that alarm goes off, and, and I, I'm too tired, or I'm doing something else, and I don't want to interrupt it, or I don't want to stop. But Emily and I have made this commitment, and we've said, no, 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 we've got to quit not paying attention. When that alarm goes off, 
Every single night at 9.30 p.m., we're gathering together, her and I, and we're praying over and for our kids and for our marriage. Now, that's not the only time or place we pray. The truth of the matter is that in my life, the way our family tends to work and function is that I'm the last one awake. Now, I know that that's beginning to change, and if we let our kids stay up as late as they wanted, they would be up way past me. But most nights of the week, as long as they have school the next day, I'm the last one to go to bed. And one of the most important times of prayer that I have is when everybody else is asleep and I will stand outside of the hall where all of our bedrooms are and I will place my hand upon each of my kids and even upon my own bedroom as I pray for my wife. But I will go from door to door lifting up my children because I believe it matters who prays. And God has given me responsibility over those children. And therefore, I think there's a special authority that comes and it matters that I'm praying for them. And they don't even know it. But in the middle of the night, I will stand at their door praying over my children. Now, God gives us responsibility over things other than our kids, too. God has also given Emily and I responsibility for our church, responsibility for, for faith church. In fact, God called Emily and I here eight years ago, and he called us here through prayer. (laughs) Emily and I were at a a different church. I wasn't the senior pastor there. I was just on staff, and uh, the church had created a new position, and they wanted me to take that position. But they said, Kirk, if you take this, we don't want you to go anywhere. We want to know that you're going to be here, and they asked me to make a five-year commitment to them. And so I wanted to take that seriously. And I said, well, Emily and I need to, to get away and we need to pray. The church we were at was, was in Iowa and Illinois. They had campuses in both states. We lived in Iowa, but the location I was at was in Illinois. But, we, uh, we, but as, as many of you know, I'm from the area here. I grew up in Williamston. My parents have lived here in Williamston. And so um, I knew of Faith Church. And um, uh, and I'd attended here. And if you guys have been here very long, Brandon Bruce was the senior pastor before me. He was the pastor here at that point in time. I knew Brandon. He's a friend of mine. And so Emily and I, we, we began to pray about this new position that our current church had. We prayed together. We prayed separate. We came back together. And we came back together. We both talked. And as we talked, we both kind of realized that God gave us the same thing. That we both felt like God was saying, hey, you are to take this new role at your current church. And the only way I want you to leave is a faith church in Lansing, Michigan calls. Now, I, said, I knew Brandon, and I knew Brandon was here, and as far as I knew, everything was amazing, everything was going great. I couldn't picture Brandon leaving. I talked to him just not that long ago. And so both my wife and I, we were like, all right, that means that God says we can make the five-year commitment. We're not going anywhere. We know Brandon's not going to go anywhere. And God only gave us one out. We're only going to leave our current church, a faith church in, in Lansing, Michigan calls, and they've got a senior pastor they're not going to call. So we committed to five years. Kid you not, nine months later, (laughs) I remember I was sitting in our living room. I was folding clothes. I love the job of folding clothes because I can watch TV while I do it. Um, And I was, (laughs) true story, I was was folding clothes and my wife was on the computer and she was working on stuff for our Awana ministry at that time. She led the uh, the Awana ministry at that, our current church at that time. And all of a sudden she was on Facebook doing something and she goes, oh no. And I went, what? And she says, Kirk, um, Brandon and Jen just announced on Facebook that they're leaving Faith Church. I was like, oh, my word. And she goes, well, what does that mean? I said, well, it doesn't mean anything. She goes, yeah, but, but we said, I go, no, no, it's if they call us. So as long as they don't call us, then it doesn't mean anything. She's like, okay, yeah, you're right. Two months later, Faith Church called. <laughs> and from that day, we just knew. We just knew this is where God wants us to be. And so God called us to Faith Church through prayer. And I think it matters that Emily and I, who God has asked to be in a position of authority and leadership here, I think it matters that we pray for Faith Church. And so we do. We pray over our church and for our church. And it's not to say that, that oh, Kirk and Emily are praying for Faith Church that no one else needs to or has to. No, 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 no. It's just that how could we possibly stand in front of you and ask you all to be praying for the church if we're not praying for the church? We have to lead in this. We have to set the example. And I think it matters who prays because I believe this idea that where God gives you responsibility, he gives you authority. And so what I want to do today is I want to help each and every one of you not underestimate your prayers, the power of your prayers and the places where God has given you responsibility. If you were to come to me as your pastor, and if you were to ask me, if you were to say, hey, Kirk, would you pray for my kids? 
Absolutely, I would say, of course I will. And I would gladly pray for your kids. I would do that in a heartbeat. But I believe that God wants you to be praying as well. Because where he gives responsibility, he gives special authority. And your prayers are powerful and significant in the lives of your children. And so let me just say, parents, I know t- and I know today's Mother's Day, but let's just be honest. Like, parents, this is for mom and dad. You both have responsibility to raise your kids and to lead them to knowing Jesus, okay? So parents, both of you, mom and dad, it is both of you who have responsibility over your children and who need to be praying because it matters who prays. Because think about this. Mom and dad, think about this. You know your kids better than anyone else. Listen, listen, if you ask me to pray for your kids, when I'm praying for them, I'm guessing at how to pray for them. I'm guessing at who they are and their personalities. And I, I might know them and based on what I've seen and observed, but you know your children like no one else. You know their struggles, their hurts, their temptations, their pains in life. You know their personalities, their strengths, their weaknesses. You know what they're up against. You know what they're facing. You, better than anyone else, knows how to pray for them. I think it matters who prays. And so I think we should follow the example of Mary and pray over our children. And let's not pretend that this was some easy road for Mary. She was a mom. And I know, I know, I know, she had the perfect child. And can, can you imagine, can you just imagine for a minute being the mother of Jesus? Go to sleep now, honey. He sleeps. Wake up now. And he wakes up. <laughs> Do what mommy says. Okay. Right? <laughs> like, like if, you, if you were the mother of Mary, you'd probably write a book on parenting. And you would call it, How I Raised the Perfect Child. <laughs> But Mary didn't have it as easy as you might think. Did you know that Mary actually had at least seven children? According to scripture, it actually names Jesus' four younger brothers. And then it also says that he had sisters, plural, meaning at least two. That tells us that Mary raised at least seven children, possibly more. And so if you're raising seven children, you have every reason to need to become a prayer warrior. (laughs) And there's no doubt, there's no doubt that Mary's children gave her gray hairs. I'll bet you by the time she's 49 or 50 and she's in that upper room praying for Jesus, I'll bet you she's got a whole head of gray. (laughs) Which makes me think of a little story I heard one time about this young little girl who was sitting at the kitchen table. She was finishing up her breakfast. And as she's finishing up her breakfast, her mom is there in the kitchen and her mom is cleaning up the kitchen and doing some work. And the little girl notices something about her mom she hadn't noticed before. She sees in her mom's hair that there's a few hairs that stand out from the others. (laughs) The few little straggling gray hairs that really stood out amongst the rest of the brunette hair. And so she asked her mom, she said, Mom, how come some of your hairs are gray and others aren't? And her mom looked at her and she said, Well, honey, every time you do something that makes mama upset or cry and that isn't right, Mommy gets a gray hair. That really made the little girl think. She sat there in silence for quite a long time. The mom actually started to worry about, oh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I thought it was kind of humorous. But then all of a sudden, the little girl breaks her silence. She goes, oh. She goes, Mama, why is Grandma's hair full of, or Grandma's head full of gray hair then? <laughs> Isn't it great how kids, sometimes they flip it on you, right? <laughs> Well, back to our message. You see, God chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus. And in so doing, God chose who was going to be the prayer warrior over Jesus. Each of you that are parents, God has chosen you to be the parent over your children. And in so doing, God chose who was going to be the prayer warriors over those children as well. But let me just pause for a moment and say here that maybe you're listening to this and you're not a parent. And maybe you're kind of going, well, I I guess this doesn't impact me or this message isn't for me. But let me speak to you for just a minute if if that's your situation. Here's what I found in my life. Is that almost every single one of us have some kids in our life that we interact with, that we have influence over, that we are able to impact. Who maybe don't have a parent that's a prayer warrior. 
a parent that's a spiritual leader in their life. And I, I don't know what your role may be. Maybe, maybe you're a, a babysitter or a nanny, and, and the kids that you babysit and nanny are, are kids that you can be praying for. Maybe you're a teacher, and you're a teacher. You've got like 30 kids, right? <laughs> but it doesn't have to just be that. It could just be kids that you know from the neighborhood. It could be siblings of yours, and maybe for whatever reason they don't... They're, have the influence in their life that maybe they should or you wish they did and you could be that. Maybe it's cousins, relatives, friends. But my guess is that every one of us has kids in our life that we have some influence over. And I want to challenge you to maybe look at your life and ask, wait a second, is it possible that I have... (laughs) Is it possible that God might be asking me to be a spiritual influence in their life. And if God is asking you to be a spiritual influence in your life, then I will remind you of what we have been saying all along, which is that where God gives you responsibility, he gives you authority. If there is someone in your life that God is asking you to connect with and reach out to and possibly bless and lead towards Jesus, he's asking you to be praying for them as well. He's given you an authority that maybe you don't realize or understand. And so moms and dads, caretakers, siblings, friends, and neighbors, I implore you to become prayer warriors in the lives of those who God has given you any kind of responsibility over. (laughs) Because prayer opens up doors and prayer changes things. In fact, if, if if I can... I always love to give physical representations of a spiritual reality. And any time that you try to give an illustration, let's just be honest, it doesn't always work. If you play it all the way through it, it does not going to be a perfect spiritual illustration. The only things that work like that is, you know, the parables in the New Testament that Jesus gives. But I think prayer is kind of like a hall pass. Remember hall passes? Um, That whole idea that, like, you can't be in the hall unless you have a pass, but when you have a pass, then then you can be. Here's what I mean by that is let's say that you're in the hall without a hall pass and suddenly the principal turns down your hallway. What are you doing? You're jumping into the bathroom and hoping he doesn't come check on you, right? Like that's what you're doing. But if you've got a hall pass and the principal turns down your hallway and she sees you coming, then all of a sudden you're like, what's up? Right? You give like the wink and the nod. You're confident because you got the hall pass, which means that you're allowed to be here. This is ground that you otherwise might not be allowed to be on and be in, but now because you got the hall pass, you can. Parents, praying for your kids is like this. I have found that in the places that you pray for your kids, it is like God granting them space. It's like God granting them new ground that they can now move into that maybe they haven't been in before. And so we pray things like, God, give my kids peace where they didn't have it. God, give my kids wisdom where they lack it. God, give my kids joy that only comes from the Lord. God, open up doors in my kids' life that they might come to know you and love you more and have greater knowledge of you. When you pray for your kids, it's like breaking open new ground before them that they can step into and they can know and understand God better because prayer matters. It matters who's praying and it changes things because where God gives responsibility, he gives authority. And so this brings us to our so what moment. What does this mean? What do we do with this? Where do we go from here? If you remember the very first point that I made today was I said this. I said that prayer releases the kingdom of God. Prayer releases the kingdom of God. And that's true every time we pray. And and it seems to be especially true when we pray for our children. My prayers for my kids will open up and release the kingdom of God in their lives in a powerful way. You know how I know this? I know this because this is my story. I know this because I've watched this take place in my own life. See, in elementary school, it quickly became apparent to my parents that I was one of those kids who I had the attention of all of the teachers. (laughs) They knew who I was. (laughs) They warned the next grade about me. (laughs) And I was constantly in trouble. I was in trouble for a whole assortment of things. I mean, I mean, just from things like, I mean, I was always getting in fights. One fight I got into, I threw a brick at another kid. <laughs> hey, funny story, the kid I threw the brick at, he now attends Faith Church. <laughs> Not only that, but one of these days, he's going to stand up in front of you. He and I have been talking about this, and he's going to tell you his story. I don't mean the brick story. I mean, maybe he'll tell you the brick story. 
But he's going to tell you his story of life change that God has impacted his life and it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be incredible and I can't wait for that day. <laughs> but for me, man, in, in elementary and early years, I was in trouble all the time. Throwing bricks, getting in fights, cursing out teachers. I, I threw a kickball at one of my teachers, intentionally hit her right in the face with it. Like this is the kind of kid I was. I mean, I, I kid you not, one time my parents went to parent-teacher conferences and my mom happens to decide to look through the lost and found. And I remember she all of a sudden holds up this pair of pants and she goes, Kirk, aren't these your jeans? And I looked and I went, yes, they are, mom. And she goes, what in the world? How, did, how do you lose jeans at school? Like, how did you come home without pants on? How did I not know? Like, this is the kind of kid I was. And so my parents, I was always in trouble. I was always in the principal's office. My parents were always worried about me. It drove them to their knees. And my mom and my dad became these prayer warriors for their son because they were so worried about what was going to happen. They didn't know where to turn. They didn't know what to do. And so they knew the only place to turn was to the one who was the king, the one who they could turn to. And I'm telling you, church, it matters who prays. You see, I realize that I'm very much a product of a praying mom and a praying dad. And I realize that every week that I get to stand in front of you, every week that I get to teach and I get to preach, every week that I get to, to have any kind of influence into your life, that you let me come into your home and try to speak truth and encourage you and strengthen you and challenge you and push you and help you to grow and help you to know Jesus more. I understand that every week that I get to do that, it is only because I had these parents that understood the power of a praying parent. I had parents who would fall to their knees and lift me up Day after day after day after day. I'm in a position of influence because prayer changes things. I'm in a position of influence because prayer releases the kingdom of God. I watched this take place in my own life. And I know it can be a reality in the life of your children as well. I don't mean that that means that if you pray for your kids, they're going to automatically become pastors. That's not what I mean. They might. <laughs> But what I do mean is that if you will lift up in prayer for your kids, it will release the kingdom of God into their life to where what they're going to do is they're going to begin to follow Jesus, to know and understand his will better, and to commit to that, which isn't exactly what we want as parents. That's exactly what we want. Like, I don't care if my kids play the sports that I played. I don't care if my kids are smarter than me or not as smart as me, get as good a grades or less as good a grades. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any rewards, awards, or whatnot. What I care about is do my kids know Jesus and are they committed to following him in their life? That's what I want and that is what I mean when I say prayer releases the kingdom of God. When you pray over your children, they may not do what you want them to do, but they will do what God leads leads them to do, and that's what every praying parent is praying for. It makes a difference. It matters. My prayer for you is that if you have any influence in any child's life, you'd say, I need to be speaking into their life through my prayers. Would you let me pray for you now? Heavenly Father, I want to pray not just for the parents, but each and every one of us who may be here that has any kind of influence in, uh, in any other child's life. And it doesn't even matter how old they are. You know, the parents never stop praying. My parents are still praying for me to this day. And so, Lord, what I would ask is that, that may you show us who it is that you want us to be praying for. May you show us the, the places in the ground that you have given to us and said, this is where I want to release my kingdom, and I need you to be praying for this child. I need to be you to be praying for this teen. I need you to be influencing them towards Jesus. And it matters who prays. God, may we live in the reality of like where you give responsibility, you also give authority. Our prayers matter, they make a difference. Let us never doubt that, but rather be willing to step into it and say, okay, God, thank you for the call that you're putting on my life. It matters how I live, it matters how I pray, it matters how I trust. And may this entire church become prayer warriors for Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
us women, we just take care of people. It's part of how God created us. We're mostly very nurturing, you know? And so we just want to honor you and we want to pray over you. Whatever stage of life you're in, maybe you have 10 kids, maybe you don't have any yet, maybe you, whatever your story is, it doesn't matter, we want to honor you. So if you're alone, would you just place your hand on your heart? And if you're someone sitting next to somebody like this, would you just put your arm towards them? And we want to pray over you. We want to commission you. We want to celebrate who you are and all that you do. So God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that your presence is real, that these women are feel and know without a shadow of a doubt that they are so, so loved. God, those of us that have kids, would you just open our eyes to how strong we are? Open our eyes to the knowledge that we don't have to have it perfect because you have everything we need. You are the well that never runs dry and you are standing there with open arms for us all day, every day. Lord, help us to know we are not a disappointment to you. Whether we just scream at our kids to go to bed for the eighth time tonight, whatever it is, God, we do not disappoint you. And you are there with the tools you don't call us to do something without preparing us and equipping us and being there for us. God, we praise you for that. We pray for all of the people that are grandmothers and aunts, that they would know that they have raised a legacy. Lord, that they would be lights in their family. That they would see how you have moved in their lives. And maybe, Lord, if it has seemed that you've been empty, Lord, would you just reveal yourself in a new way, would you help them to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are there and you are loving them and they are making a difference in their families. And God, to all of those women who are hoping, maybe they're trying right now to have a baby or maybe they're in the adoption or fostering process, God, would you just cover them with your grace and your peace would you remove any sadness or sorrow? Would you renew their hope and restore their souls? God, help this to not be a sad day for them, but a day that they look to you and they know their worth. And they know that the plans you have for them are for them to prosper and not harm them for them to have a hope and a future. That is what your word says, and we are taking you at your word. For anyone missing a mama today, or missing a grandma, if they've had a recent death or it was long ago, that wound is still there, God, and we pray healing over that wound. We pray that they would find joy in their memories and peace in their hearts. And Lord, if their relationship is estranged, would you again just restore their soul and renew their hope? Your word also says that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will walk and not grow weary. They will run and not be faint. God, would you just lift us up on eagles' wings? Today is the day that we honor these women, that we honor these amazing, fierce warriors in your kingdom. God, remind them of who they are and how much you love them. Help us to take the blinders off and to stand firm and accept it for ourselves. You have so much freedom for us. Help us to accept it and to breathe it in and cement it deep down that the enemy may never snatch it away. We are yours, and you delight in us. God, we praise you, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We love you, and we bless these people. It's in Jesus' mighty and beautiful name. We pray these things. Amen. We have one more song for you today, and we just... We couldn't not sing this one. It's the blessing. We pray that God's peace and his favor be upon you and all the generations behind you.
receive this blessing today.
take you at your word and we receive this blessing. We say, Amen. So be it. We stand in agreement. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us and for choosing us and for never giving up on us. We love you and we praise your name today. And we say, Amen. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great week. See you next time.